Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Loki, and I'm here with some Dracalia Lost. Now, I'm gonna click away from there because the dudes were talking. Uh, today's video is gonna be a very different kind of Dracalia Lost video because I'm gonna go over re-rolling. Um, so, if you want to start the game and you want to know the best way to kind of start off with, um, I'm gonna basically kind of run you down the process. Now, here's the main thing. The main process, as far as I'm aware of, I'm not 100% sure about all the other kind of methods, but I think you have to, like, delete the data or, um, reset the data and then you have to do the tutorial again. There's no way, like, I think back in the old Dokkan days, if you ever played Dragon Ball Dokkan, where they eventually found a way to just, like, automatically re-roll a new account every minute or so. I don't think you can do that here. Uh, so you have to do it the old-fashioned way, deleting the data and then doing the tutorial again. Uh, and doing all that good stuff. So let's start with, first of all, I want to say um, I was helped out by this by Lerp. I asked him to write a guide for me to help uh, to help write it because he's so knowledgeable on the game and he's easier with words. We wrote an entire guide over it and then literally later on, uh, I want to say right after I finished um, recording my original version of this, they did a version update that completely changes how rerolling is going to be done. So that's fun. So now I'm doing this kind of video and I'm going to be figuring out what to do with the rest of it. And if if you like more guide videos from me, then definitely leave a like, leave a comment and tell me all that good stuff. But for right now, let's get back into rerolling. So first, before I'm, I'm at this page because it helps me like know what's going on. But first, let me start here. Uh, this is written by Lerp. This is, these are his words. Getting started. And when starting, the most important thing to roll is a solid adventurer and a strength or skill dragon of their corresponding element. An example would be Makoto or Cerberus. Dragons contribute to an extremely large amount if your adventures base stats and so having a few good dragons often gets you much farther than having a lot, a lot of good adventurers. It's important to note though, you can clear almost all the content in the game exclusively with four adventurers and dragons. So the following are just suggestions and the entire they're basically just opinions. Now here's the thing that's changing. Currently, if you re-roll, you get a tutorial gotcha, and then you choose like you 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 basically summon from a tutorial. It's a single summon, and you get either Makoto, Navid, Xander, Maribel, Lily, Hildegard, Julieta, uh, Isalef, Lucretia, Luis, Zanfried, Hawk, or Nefaria. And if you currently re-roll, you'll be going through a banner that has that. If you start to try and re-roll around, uh, let me see, when does this update go live? I believe it's the 26. So on the 26, if you try and re-roll, what happens now is that you're going to get a free summon and it's going to be on whatever current banner is up. For this case, it's going to be the Gala banner, which is the best time to start re-rolling because the five rates are at uh, double, so they're at 6%, so it's your best chance of like starting with something new and all Gala units are crazy busted. I'll get into those a little bit more. I hide my but, uh, oops, let me go back into that menu real quick. Uh, go down here, go down to, you know, a little bit more. There we go. There we go. Okay. Uh, right here. So remember, um, specifically the ones that are making it over to the, I'm sorry if I'm going around it so much so in the new tutorial pass it after the 26 at re-roll um the ones you're going to be able you're going to be able to do a summon and then you get to pick either makoto ezalef xander zanfried hawk maribel julieta hildegard or nefaria um that means that there's no lily on the banner anymore and there's no Luis anymore, which isn't the biggest deal in the world lily is kind of a big deal because lily is really good but um I digress, I guess. So let's get into the tutorial gacha units and I'll make a note if they are in it. Let's start with right here. Makoto, so basically they're divided into, Lerp has divided them into three groups. The good, the okay, and the meh. Uh, let's start with the good. We got Nick Makoto, he has a crit based skill kit and has a skill one uh, that also increases both his strength and skill damage. Blade units have the strength co ability, which is amazing, and all of the units on your team. Now, I'm pretty positive I have all these, so let me actually very quickly go here, go to my collection, and I'll show them off. So here he is. This is Makoto, here's the dude. As I mentioned, this is his skill one, and this is his skill two, and this is his co op ability. Uh, strength is an amazing co op ability, by the way. The other dudes on the good is right here. It's Navid. One moment. Oh, sorry. 
He's the sexiest man alive, as you can see here. Look at this good looking man. Look at that art. Speak to me. Uh, the women here are chasing me. I I'm sorry, but might you hide me? Sounds good. Uh, his kit synergizes well for long combat, and there are very few places it's beneficial to use him at at the moment. There's very few, but there are very few places that actually like use him, and the reason why is because of this thing right here is that he's sleep resistant when a lot of fire um, events are stun related, so he ends up being kind of not uh, not like 100% great because you get hit by stun a whole bunch and you get stunned, so you have to play very well with Navi. That doesn't stop excellent players from using him though. Um, also his mana spiral greatly improves his kit and it takes, but it takes time and effort for new people. So he's definitely harder to use if you're a new person. Uh, next dude we got on the list is Xander. Uh, he is one of the best for wave based content due to his striker strength and his skill one, which you can see right here. Uh, due to striker strength, gain damage. Due to striker strength and his skill 1 gaining damage per buff on him, he also has one of the strongest 4 strikes in the game due to his 40% 4 strike buff, which I believe is right here. Wait, no. There it is. Boom. Uh, boom. Anyway, uh, that's Sander. Next we got Maribel. These are all units that are fantastic to start with, and so far all the ones I mentioned past the 26 you'll actually be able to use which is a good reminder. Let me see. I know I have you, Maribel. Where are you? Where are you hiding? Um, the wind. There she is. Maribel. She has a 100% skill prep and skill damage at 100% HP. She has a massive nuke ability, but it requires staying at full HP for the optimal damage. As a wand user, also includes skill damage, co-op ability, which is one of the best co-op abilities to have. And as you can see here, this is exactly what he's talking about. Full HP, skill damage 40%. That skill prep is amazing. But, you know, gotta be extremely good and not take any damage, which can be very tough, for sure. Uh, next one on the good. And this is the first one that it will not be past the 26. You won't be able to pick her as one of your starting units. It's the Lily. Um, she's very similar to Maribel, but trades a bit of damage for freeze on her skill 1, which is, on the the launch of Dragalia, was an amazing ability for sure. Still is, really. The ability to freeze dudes just in place is top notch. Uh, whoop. Alright, let's go to the last dude, lady dude, on the good list. We got, um, Hildegard. And she's one of the best general hero healers in the game. She has a burst heal on her skill 1 and shield regen on her skill 2. Which you can see right there. Short, simple, to the point. Very good. And now we'll go into the okay. Thank god we're still on light because the next okay one is Julieta. Um, she's good in wave-based content um, like Imperial Onslaught or Facility Events, but her defense focus in general isn't great because Dragalia is all about DPS at the moment. Next we got right here. Where is she? It is Ezolith. There she is. Boom. Uh, she suffers from an extremely long skill 1 animation of subpar skill 2, but otherwise good. Her mana spiral makes her extremely good. Similar to Navid, but not on the same level because of the extremely long like skill 1 animation. It goes on for a long time, and um, some attacks that you can't dodge, it really sucks to be caught in mid-animation for <laughs> because it, it's really um, unfortunate. All right, let's go here. Uh, next one is Lucretia. Um, someone just commented on my Gala banner uh, summons, so there, that's that noise you just heard. Uh, Lucretia, she energizes is nice for longer battles. Her energize is good for longer battles, but she is generally weaker than all other one units. And this is the last member of the okay. You're not on there, Hope. I'm sorry. The last one right here is Luis. Poison-based skills synergizes especially well with the dragon Pazuzu, but that's really all you can say about her. And finally, we have the Meh, which are just, at the moment, because they don't have a minus spiral or anything, they're just really sad units. I can't start here, I'm sorry. Right here. We got Xanfried. He has extremely high... Um, uh, SP cost on his skill 2, which makes him less effective buffer than Elise, who is free. So a unit who is free is better. Yeah, Elise's skill is on her skill 1. Oops. You didn't see any of that. One moment. 
Let me go back there just a little bit. All right, sorry about that. Let's continue. Zanfried, um, yeah, this part right here, really a big bummer. His only real, uh, just because like literally Ellie has it and she's free, so there's really no reason for his to be like such on a longer cooldown than hers is. And his only real benefit is that he gets burn resistance at 100%. As you can see here, he's so bad I haven't really even put any effort into him. I really hope he gets a mana spiral to get him buffed in some way. Next we got Hawk. Oh god, this guy. He's also not- <laughs> you're gonna see a running thing with a lot of these lower dudes is that I haven't trained them. Hawk's entire kit is based around stunning enemies with his force strike after using skill 2 and then hitting with skill 1. His stun becomes increasingly more difficult to land on enemies and his bow force strike is pretty bad to begin with. Yep, bows are, I think, the maybe one of the worst classes in the game. Yeah, their force strike is speci specifically has been buffed and is still not good. And this is the last one on the tutorial. In the current tutorial is Nefaria. She's exactly Lock Hawk, except for she has blind instead of stun, which makes her slightly better. And I just want to make a note that I think she's very pretty. So there you go. Now we'll go back here. Take a quick look at the update. And where is it? It's down here a little bit further. Now, as I mentioned, currently the way you do it, you get to summon on a single banner and it's random which one you get. Um, but if you start to the start the game at the 26th, after the update to it, you'll basically be able to, you'll get a free tenfold summon for your first time on the current banner, which is a gala banner. And then you can either get Makoto. Then you can select either Makoto, Ezelif, Xander, Xanfried, Hawk, Maribel, Julieta, or Hildegard. Oh, and Nefaria. So out of those, I would say that obviously the top picks are Makoto, it is Xander, and then it's also Maribel and Hildegard. Uh, with Julieta being a potential, but I don't know. And depending on which one of these you pick, you can then start the banner. If you want to reroll, you can reroll for a dragon. Um, of the dragons, let me see. Let me quickly look because there's a skill dragon that's best in each one of the... I'm pretty sure I have them all, so let me just see. The best one for fire is Kanahana Sakio because she has... Um, see, here it is. Flame strength, 20%, but then skill damage, 90%. And this is at max unbind, by the way. Um, and then for um, wind, we got this dude right here. It's a Vayu, as you can see right here. This is what he looks like. Just to show you the art, there you go. And then for water, this is Siren. Boom, very good, very good. And then next for light, light is a little bit weird, um, but the best one for light currently is considered um, Cupid, and that's because light has no skill dragon. The other good one is the um, Coruscant Phoenix, but she's very specific that she needs to be with a unit that She's a Paralyzed Punisher, so if a unit doesn't actually, like, paralyze in their base skill kit, she ends up being not very good for them, specifically. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, and then for, for Dark, it is Shinobi, and I think Shinobi is considered just outright the greatest dragon in the entire game. He's nuts when you have him. Uh, he's a skill dragon for them, and you can see his ability right here, which resets the adventure's energy level. No, it energizes everyone by one skill level, which is kind of crazy. Uh, that's kind of the five dragons to look out for for each element. Uh, with some of the ones are good. There's um, Cerberus is good right here. And then Agni is very old, but he's still good for fire specifically. And then we have Leviathan, who's very good for water. And then for, I showed you the other one for light. For um, wind, there's Pazuzu. You have right here. I think he's Pazuzu, though, is very specific to <laughs> poison dudes. Yeah, it has to be a wind poison person. And then there is Zephyr, which I don't think I have Zephyr. Let me take a quick look. Is this you, Zephyr? No, it's you, Long. No, that's Hestower. So I don't, I, funny enough, I don't actually have them. Nope, there he is. Zephyr. There he is. Which is wind, the wind, 40% rating. Uh, very good. And then the other ones for. Uh, sh I think it's Shadow, not Dark. I keep I, I constantly mess it up. It's Marshaten, who is limited, unfortunately, so you aren't able to get her at all until the New Year's banner comes back. And then there is Chthonius. All right, and that's for dragons. Now, finally, when you're going for Gala banner, the current running suggestion is basically try and get a dragon of some kind. 
But if you want to go for broke and start out with the best of the best, you want to pull a um, Gala Banner. You want to put a Gala unit, similar like Gala Luka. Like. So right now, if you wanted to start over, um, I would suggest probably going with um, Gala Luka as your main focus on it, and then try and also try and get Cupid. And if you want to, if you don't want to go that way, and you just want a good start, I would say it would be good to go with um, uh, from the starting ones. It's pretty good to go with like someone like I Makoto or Xander. I kind of want to say Makoto. I'm sorry, I just keep putting away from his voice. I would say Makoto is a good to start with, just because um, HMS is kind of the first breaking point of the harder difficulty uh, events. So having um, having him there, let me go to the front so he stops My talking to me. Uh, so kind of having them a fire unit be ready for that event would be massively helpful. Um, but if you want to start with like a Gala unit that's not Gala Luka, you want someone else, some other Gala units to look out for. And I don't have all of these, so I can't show you them, unfortunately. Um, it is one moment. There's Gala Cleo, who is considered at this time, I think some people are, tr the current numbers are, let me actually check my Discord to see if Gala Luka is now confirmed better than, better than her. Let me see. Gala, yes, please. Um... Uh, well, Luca's apparently, based on this, it sort of looks like, um, uh, damn. All right, anyway, Gala Luca is a fantastic starting unit is what I'm trying to say, but the next one in terms of Gala power, the only one that's above him or on the same level is Gala Cleo. Now, Gala Cleo, that's something that not a lot of people are going to agree with me if they're on the same level because Gala Cleo is so amazing in terms of what she does. She completely ruined Shadow as terms of a team because it became a thing of like the only good team to really run on the higher difficulty was just her. So they've been trying, kind of trying to fix it basically. But in terms of Gala units, she's top for sure. Uh, there's the Gala Prince, which I can definitely show him. Let me quickly. Oh no! New adventure. Let me go into collection. There is just to show you how they look. Right here, there's the Gala Prince, or he's known in my game as Gala Woki. Uh, oops, damn it, Hope, stop coming into the video. And then there is Gala. No, that is Halloween Mim. There's Gala Mim. There you go, the Love Struck Dragon, fantastic. Um, then there's Gala Ellie. There she is, fantastic. Um, the other ones that are in there that I don't have, unfortunately, is Cerise, who is very good for a fire bow unit. And then there is the very unfortunate person, which is Gala Ranzil, who is who has been replaced with Bride Ellie, who is Ellie, but in a bride costume. And I don't have either of those. But then there's also Victor, but I also don't have him, so I can't really show you him. But anyway, those are kind of the units. So if you wanted to reroll... I think Galavanner is a fantastic time to start rerolling because of uh, how good it is and with how many good units are on it. The only bummer about it is the appearance rate on it. Each individually is really low. See, as you can see, him on rate up is 0.500%. Uh, but someone like Galaclea, who a lot of people want, is at 0.053%. And the dragons are at a little um, higher rate than that. But, you know, that's again, if you want to reroll and you want to go for a 5. I think that's a good way to start. So if you're doing it now, obviously you want to try and get either um, Makoto, Navid, Xander, Maribel, Lily, or Hildegard, and then you don't get a free summon, but then you can start getting some free summons in Galabanner afterwards, I believe is how it works out. And then you can try and get a dragon for whoever you get on the good list there. If you do it after the 26, or on reset at the 26, then you get to pick um, from those units and then you get to have a free starting multi here. Again, it's two different ways of doing it. It's up to you to decide which way you want to do it. And the only reason I bring it up here is because Monster Hunter is coming. I don't know if you want to re-roll on Monster Hunter. If you care about Monster Hunter, you can obviously wait till Monster Hunter. But I think Gala Banner is a better time to start re-rolling. And that's it for today's video. I hope that helped. If you have any other questions, if I didn't fully explain something, um, please tell me and I will gladly answer your questions in the comments. If I'm not awake, then give me time to wake up and I'll answer your questions. Uh, but other than that, yeah, that's it. Um, if you plan to re-roll, I hope you have good luck re-rolling. And if you want more Dragalia videos, follow me, do all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good day. Bye-bye.